Hi everyone, welcome to my Cozy Reading Weekend vlog. Now, yes, Cozy Reading Weekend started yesterday, Friday night, and I showed you some footage of the night that I spent. It was really, really lovely, but I had just been feeling so exhausted that day that I couldn't really face getting in front of the camera and talking to people, as it were. But um, I finished up work that afternoon. I've been teaching remotely this whole week and was able to get some yoga in and I felt so much better. Had a lovely cozy dinner that I neglected to film, but it was delicious. And just had a lovely three hours of reading with some candles lit. It was just wonderful. And that means that I am up to the end of the first epoch of Wilkie Collins' is The Woman in White, which is my last read for Victober. Well, my last physical book. And it's really, really good so far. It's not what I was expecting at all. I was not expecting how funny bits of it were. I was not expecting the fact that it's from multiple perspectives. I find that really, really cool. It's almost like modern novels that are set up as case files where you're reading testimonials from a variety of different perspectives. So I find that really, really cool. And I think based on that, I might be able to finish this in the weekend, considering I read most of the first epoch last night. So things are going on this morning. I've had a very lazy morning. It is now just after 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. And I'm just hanging out. I need to edit my video that's going to go up tomorrow. And then we have a very exciting day planned because today my cousin is getting married. And my family and I can't go because I've been in and out of school. My mom has been in and out of work in contact with many, many people. We don't want to go traveling between states and take the chance of getting someone else sick. So she's going to be live streaming that on Facebook. So we're going to watch that at in about an hour. And then Jonathan might be coming over later today. He's going to let me know. Have our lovely cozy reading afternoon from two to five and then have a lovely dinner. So yeah, I'll check in with you a little bit later and let you know how my reading is going. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. It's cozy reading afternoon and Jonathan's here. Uh, Yay. I never watched, I haven't watched the video that I was in before because I will die of embarrassment and melt in the funnel, but one day, one day. You, you get over it. Yes. <laughs> You've done so you well. You edit enough videos, you, you get used to it. Yes, it's, very true. It's fine. Yes. Super proud of you. <laughs> so, yes, lead on. Yes, so tell us about your books. You were just telling me, but I okay. wasn't filming. Cool, books. awesome. Um, I don't, I can, I'm trying to remember if I was reading and during the last cozy reading that if I had started or, you know, rereading The Lord of the Rings, J.R.R. Tolkien, always good. Um, no, you were reading Tolkien's letters at that uh, point. Perfect. Okay, cool. So I'm still reading those in parallel, um, though I haven't, I don't think I've actually touched them since that point because I started with rereading Lord of the Rings, which is great. Um, they're about to leave Lothlorien, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so I think I'm going to finish the entirety of the Fellowship prior to um, going back and reading the letters because I'm still at that point in the letters where he is uh, he's he's still working on like you know finishing and publishing um, Fellowship of the Ring. So that would be good. So that is ah uh, tea time. So that is that. And then my other book is Shadow and Claw by Gene Wolfe, uh, who I've never read before. And uh, this is actually one of two volumes representative of, it's actually a four book series, but they have two books per volume. Um, apparently, I mean, uh, according to the cover, the, uh, Neil Gaiman says that this is the best science fiction novel of the last uh, century. Oh, so, wow. very great praise, I should think. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's good so far. The plot, as best as I can tell, is, um, so the main character, the narrator, uh, is Severian, who is a torturer um, okay. in some kind of... It seems to be some kind of futuristic 
potentially vaguely kind of post-apocalyptic, slightly medieval and fantastic version of Earth, uh, say that five times fast, um, and I'm given to understand that uh, he gets in trouble with his guild of torturers because he ends up taking mercy on one of his victims, who they call clients, so I'm looking Ooh. forward to figuring out why, like, torture is a thing. Um, you know, I haven't really figured that out yet, they're just kind of like, you know, th there's some torture, but also mostly, like, graveyard exploration, so Ooh. here for it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's good so far, um, it's very intricately written. Um, he actually just befriended a three-legged dog, uh, appropriately named Triskelly, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, just looking forward to, uh, I redid my entire, um, bedside table, so that's nothing but fantasy and science fiction, because nice. I decided I need that for the rest of this year. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so what about you? <clears throat> so I told them earlier, but I'll tell you as well. So I started The Woman in White during conferences on Wednesday night, okay. and it about 50 pages in. Nice. Um, in the breaks in between parents. Uh, but I finished the first epoch last night. It's in three epochs. Okay, gotcha. I was like, you got to have to give me more than that. It's in three epochs. I don't know why. Loki Collins thought it was a good idea. Perfect. But <laughs> I'm now going to be doing that for my first novel. So. <laughs> epoch the first. Well, and it is kind of divided by periods of time. Okay. Um, which, do you know anything about the plot? Of this, I can't remember. Well, the only thing I know about Woman in White is that no, just kidding. I was thinking about the Dana Radcliffe movie, but I'm pretty sure that was Woman in Black. Black so, yeah. just if there's a woman wearing a color, I don't know. About it, so, <laughs> <laughs> Woman in Blue, you know, enchanting, definitely recommend it. You need but. to write that. <laughs> cool, um, and it'll so, be divided into epoch. It's gonna be great. Right. So, the Woman in White is about this artist okay. who's. His friend gets him a job as a drawing master mm. to two half-sisters, I think, who, okay. who live with their uncle in some manner in northern England. Naturally. And he's on his way there, <clears throat> and he meets this woman who's entirely dressed in white. Okay. And she's speaking very distractedly. There's clearly something wrong. There may be you know, some sort of disturbance going okay, on. Yeah, There's sure. something going on. Um, but he helps her find her way to London like she needs. And okay. off she goes and she disappears into the night. Right. A few minutes, Hopefully in the direction of London. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a few minutes later, these other two men in a carriage go by and they pass okay. a policeman who's walking behind Walter. Okay. And they call out to the policeman, have you seen a woman who's dressed completely in white? Indeed. And he says, well, no, why? Well, she's, she's just escaped from an asylum. Okay. And yep. then he goes to the house where he's the drawing master and he starts finding out that she is somehow connected mm. to this family okay. and <clears throat> then you get into one of the nieces has been engaged for years through her father. Okay. Her father arranged this match to Sir Percival Glide, who is That's now my username on <laughs> the next social media platform I join. <laughs> he's, he's a terrible person. Okay. Um, Just so personal, then. Right, and he... You start slowly seeing... Well, was the woman in white right about him? What's her connection uh, to him? Okay. Yeah. Is a similar thing going to start to happen yeah. to this niece? Okay, sure. Um, but the first part was told in three different perspectives. Oh, fun, okay. You start with Walter laying out what he knows. Yeah. <clears throat> but then he leaves at some point. Mm -hmm. So then the family lawyer picks up mm -hmm. <clears throat> the next section, <clears throat> and then you're hearing from the other niece's diaries okay. as the third person. Oh, okay. So the second epoch um, is six months later, but mm -hmm. we're still hearing from Marion's diaries okay. so far. Very cool. Uh, that yeah. sounds good. And totally not what I thought, because I thought it was just like the woman in black. Minus Anna Radcliffe, so... <laughs> no, it's still creepy, still a mystery, but good. much more... It's much more gothic in terms of, I loved, I think it was Tom Hiddleston's description mm -hmm. of um, Crimson Peak. Where yeah. The, the truly gothic is, yes, there are monsters, but the true monsters are the people. Right, right, yeah. So yep. it's, it's that. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, good stuff. And you're making good progress with that. So. Thank you. Excellent. C'est magnifique. Yeah. So, go get your tea. Cool. You've been very patient with me. Go get your tea. <laughs> it's over, Steve, now.
everyone, welcome back. It is Sunday afternoon now, so good afternoon. And this morning was supposed to be a cozy reading morning. However, it, it was cozy and it was a morning, but I got very little reading done. It took me ages to wake up this morning. I had one of those nights where I slept all the way through it, but my dreams were so frantic and so exhausting that I slept an hour past my alarm. So it, it was not a reading morning, but I am now in my comfiest clothes ever. And I have about half an hour before I'm going to call my dear friend Lauren, who lives out in Ohio. And so I'm gonna use that time to keep reading The Woman in White. I made some progress yesterday, but uh, yesterday was also one of those reading sessions with Jonathan where we had to keep stopping and reading each other bits and Oh, I just thought of something I need to tell you that, so it wasn't really very productive. I just hit the 300 page mark. I'm halfway through the second epoch. And now the plot is finally picking up, which is really, really good. We had a lot of new characters at the beginning of the second epoch, and those characters are very creepy, but not a lot was happening as compared to the first half. And I was getting sort of disappointed and sort of tired but now the plot is picking up as well, so I'm starting to enjoy it a little bit more. It is also, conveniently enough, World Opera Day. So Lauren and I are going to be watching the perfect version of Marriage of Figaro that's being streamed online from the San Francisco Opera House. It has our dream cast, it really does. Lisette Oropesa is definitely my favorite soprano, and I think she might be Lauren's as well. We saw her last, this time last year, at the Met doing Menon, and she is amazing. I've spoken about her possibly on this channel before. I've taken her master classes this spring when everything was shut, and she is incredible. So she is singing Susanna in this production, and Luca Pizzaroni is one of my favorite baritones, and he is not playing Figaro, which is how I've seen him before singing in this opera, but he's playing Count Alma Viva, which if someone out there could do a production of Nozze di Figaro, where Figaro and the Count, who are both baritone roles, swapped every other night, I think that would do so many amazing things with the characters and so many thematic things. I don't know if it's possible from a role memorization standpoint, but just throwing that out there in case it makes it back. Oh, and Kate Lindsay, Kate Lindsay, my mezzo-soprano idol role model. She is absolutely incredible. Watch her in any of the roles that she does. She is so amazing and so immersed in the role and a beautiful singer. She is playing Cherubino the page and doing some amazing gender swapping things because just like in Shakespeare, we have a female singer playing a boy who then has to dress up as a girl at various points throughout the production. And it's Mozart, who doesn't love Mozart? And it's got slapstick, it's got gender commentary, it's got all of the wonderful things. So what better way to celebrate World Opera Day? And if Lauren would like to be on my channel, I might show you a bit of us watching that later. We were also supposed to get a takeout dinner tonight because it's my parents' anniversary on Tuesday. And while we could go out to eat, we don't really feel comfortable doing that right now. So they were planning on getting takeout from our favorite Italian restaurant, but it turns out they're closed on Sundays and we found that out, oh, an hour and a half ago. So we've sorted out something else for dinner instead. Luckily, that was what part of the morning was. And so I might show you a little bit of our cozy dinner later on. But in the meantime, let's get some reading in. Madame, 
Oh, no. 